Okay, so as we start chapter 13, I want to start off with a little bit of review. So I want to talk about sine of theta equals 1. Uh, I've got the picture already graphed on Desmos. You can tell it's a sine function because it starts at 0. And um, when we talk about the sine of theta equaling 1, the theta represents your input. Now, the input here is going to be an angle measurement. It could be in radians. It could be in degrees. Most of the time, it's going to be in radians. So if you look at my x-axis here, that's why you see it listed in radians, which you could change in decimals, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So it's going to be an angle measurement where the output is equal to 1. So the 1 is the output. Now, in this problem, because we're talking about sine, we're talking about the y value. So the y value has to be 1. So if we were to look at the picture for this, y equals 1, it looks like that. So the solution, or solutions, I should say, are here here, and here. Now, typically when we um, list these solutions, there's different ways we can write the solutions depending on the instructions. They could give us an interval, and we would just have to list all of the solutions that fall within those intervals, or the boundaries, I guess you could call it. Or they use this term called full generality. Full generality means every single solution. Now, that gets kind of weird because... Um, if you consider sine and cosine graphs, they're infinite. So that means that our answers are infinite. So here's how you approach this. What we typically do and what you'll typically see in textbooks and on the internet is we list the solution that is positive and closest to the origin. So that makes it this one right here. So that value right there is at pi halves. So the solution to this we would say is at pi halves. Now, that's one specific solution, though. I want to write something in very general terms that's going to account for every single part that's at the top of these um, waves. So here's how we do that. All you have to do is consider how far it is between the points. So the distance from here to here is, if you just consider the x values, it's going to be 5 pi halves minus pi halves. If you do that in a calculator, that's just 2 pi or 4 pi over 2, which reduces to 2 pi. Now, when you take these consecutive points and do the math for it, this is going to be 0 minus, oh, sorry, not 0. That's pi halves. Just kidding. Let me back that up a little bit. This spot from here to here, not to the um, y-axis, it's going to be pi halves minus a negative 3 pi halves which again, this turns to a plus and it's still 4 halves, which is equal to 2 pi. So the generality statement is going to add 2 pi to it, but we want this to account all the way up until infinity in both directions. So what we would do is we would just attach an n to it. So now no matter what we plug in for n, as long as it's an integer, it should give us one of those values that's going to give us a y value of 1. Now I want to also talk about... Um, just kind of in general. This is the answer to that question, by the way, but it, just in general, um, some of the generality statements that we'll be attaching, there are a lot of them, they're going to be plus 2 pi n, it could be plus pi n, or it could be plus pi over 2 n. Now, that's not all of them, um, but those are the ones that are most commonly used, so I just wanted to point that out ahead of time. Now, if we were talking about a specific interval, then we would have a finite number and we wouldn't have that generality part attached to it. Okay, so when we actually get to the um, solving portion, um, we can uh, isolate the trig function. So the trig function in this case is sine, so I would just subtract 2 to both sides. And if you notice, this is the problem that I was just talking about. So we kind of already have the answers. However, I wanted to show you that you can also use the unit circle to solve that. So this is saying the sine of theta is equal to 1. So they're asking us where on the unit circle is the y value equal to 1. So sine of theta, if I loosely translate this, means the y coordinate equals 1. If you do an entire loop around the unit circle, you're going to find that's right here. So the answer is at pi halves. Now, you could um, search around the entire unit circle, and you're going to find that that's the only one. But the generality statement comes from the fact that if I do a full rotation and I end, back, end up back there uh, at the coterminal angle, um, it's 2 pi because I'm completing a full circle, and a full revolution is 2 pi. 
So we still get that same exact answer. Um, the answer is going to be pi halves plus 2 pi n. And that's our, um, our answer for question number one. Now in question number two, let's go back to the other screen. The method is pretty much the same, and you can use whichever method you want. You can go into the graph. You can go into the um, unit circle. So I want to show you this one on the graph. So same, same idea, same concept. We want to add the radical 2 over because we want to isolate the trig function. So we're going to have secant theta is equal to radical 2. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Desmos, and I'm going to put in a secant graph, secant of x, and this one looks a little weird, but let me take a look at the next part. Uh, we want to know when it's equal to radical 2, so we can go into here, and we can put in uh, the square root of 2, and we're going to put it in as a y equals. So you can see that each one of our little, uh, they almost look like parabolas, they have two solutions. If you notice, there's a solution on the right, there's a solution on the left. However, typically the way people write this is they're going to take a look at uh, the pi fourths side because it's positive and it's closest to the origin. So we're going to undo this one for a second. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Now, if I'm going to focus on the one on the right, I need to take a look at the one on the right over here also. So the distance between these two, if I do 9 fourths take away uh, 1 pi fourth, it ends up being 8 pi fourths, which is still just 2 pi. So one of our solutions is going to be um, at pi fourths, and if we're writing it uh, in full generality, it's going to be pi fourths plus 2 pi n. It's going to be one of them. And then we're going to take a look at the other side. So it also has one that's on the negative side, but we don't really take a, you know, we don't pay attention to the negative side. We kind of focus on the positive side. We're going to take a look at this one. So that's at 7 pi fourths. And if I look at the one on the left side of this little section, it's at negative pi fourths. So if I do 7 pi fourths minus a negative pi fourths, that still gives me a positive 2 pi. So the second um, way of writing our solution to the second half of this problem is going to be 7 pi fourths, 7 pi fourths. And again, it's just going to be plus 2 pi n. These are our two answers. So these two answers are going to account for every single solution in the entire picture from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, number three. Number three, uh, still you want to isolate the, um, the trig function, so we're going to add four to both sides. So I got the cosecant squared of theta is equal to four. And then what we want to do here is we don't want this exponent here, so we're going to have to take the square root. And so when you square root both sides, you're going to end up with a positive or a negative two. And that's where the cosecant of theta is equal to positive or negative 2. Now, I've already done a couple of examples where I used um, Desmos. So what I'm going to do now is I want to take a look at how to do it on the unit circle. So anytime you're dealing with the unit circle, you want to always convert into the three common um, uh, trig functions that we know. So it's going to be either a sine, a cosine, or a tangent. So a cosecant, we know that the cosecant is just the reciprocal of the sine. So if I want to change this into a sine, that means that the other side is also a reciprocal. So it's going to say plus or minus one half. So we're going to take a look at the unit circle and we're going to go find all of the spots where the sine coordinate is at plus or minus one half. So I have a one half here. I have a one half here. I have a one half for my sine. Where's my other signs? Yeah, so it looks like um, those are two sine problems. So we've got the positive one half. Now remember, this also had a negative one half. So the answer was plus or minus one half. So it's also going to count this one and it's going to count this one. So the measurements of interest are going to be here, 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 and here. So in order to write this generality statement, what we need to do is we need to see if there's any patterns that we can um, write using either the 2 pi, uh, the pi halves, or just pi. So what I want to take a look at and think about is this line right here. 
you guys learned in geometry that every straight line is 180 degrees. So that means from pi 6 all the way to here, that's going to be a distance of pi, which is 180 degrees. So that means that our generality statement can be written for this problem as pi 6 plus pi n. So that's going to be uh, pi 6 plus pi n. It's going to be one of our uh, full generality statements to describe the solutions, but that's not all of them because we have a second one over there. So we're going to go back and we're going to talk about this one right here. Now the 5 pi 6, that one is on this line. So in order to get from that section to this section over here, that's another half circle. So again, that's just another pi. So the second one is going to be 5 pi 6. So we're going to have 5 pi 6 plus pi n once again. So using these two um, solutions written in full generality, that should account for every single possible solution around that unit circle, no matter how many revolutions you do. It'll hit every single one of those ones that we marked. Okay. So number four, number four has two different signs, but that's not an issue. We want to get them all to one side. So I'm going to add sine of x over here. So I'm going to say this is equal to zero now. So I'll have two sine of x's plus radical 2, then I want to subtract radical 2. So I have 2 sine x equals negative radical 2, and then I want to divide by 2. So the sine of x is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. So again, you can look at the unit circle, you can look at... Um, uh, the graph. I'm going to go ahead and do the unit circle one more time just so you have another example of that. So I'll clear this off and see what we're looking at. We're looking at sine is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. So that means that the y coordinate has to be negative radical 2 over 2. So that means we have a solution here because we have negative radical 2 over 2. And then here's another one right here. Now we don't look at the ones above because it doesn't have a plus or minus symbol. So we're only looking at the negatives and negative signs are below the x-axis. Now, the issue here is um, to write this in full generality, we need to come up with um, something using one of these statements where we are going to um, add something to it. Now, I gave you some options to try to narrow it down. Obviously, the pi isn't going to work because if I use pi, it's going to use this one over here, and that one doesn't count because we're, we're not looking at that. We're only looking at the ones down below the axis. So the question becomes... How do we get from one part to the other? Now, which one do we use in the first place? We have to use 5 pi fourths because if you look at a graph, that's going to come before 7 pi fourths, and we always use the one that's closest to the, um, to the origin. So our generality statement here is going to say 5 pi fourths. Let's see what we have here. It looks like we're going to use 5 pi fourths. Plus, now how far would it be to get from here to here? Well, that looks like half a circle, and half, half a circle would be pi halves. So pi halves would be that distance plus pi halves n. So if we go back, this guy's not going to work. Oops. I'm going to go back over here. This one isn't going to work. So what's going to end up happening is, let me go ahead and get rid of this part right here. The only way we can get this to work without including unnecessary um, solutions is we're going to write 5 pi fourths plus 2 pi n. So if you look at the unit circle, the only way we can get back to 5 uh, pi fourths is to do a full revolution. And so... By doing these full revolutions, that isn't going to cause any unnecessary solutions to occur because we're ending up at the same original spot. So this one is actually going to have to have two statements that are written. And the other one, I think it was at 7 pi fourths. So we have 7 pi fourths plus 2 pi n. So these are the two answers that we would have to write. Okay, the next part of this is to solve uh, using the interval. So I want to talk about what this means right here. So instead of um, having an infinite number of lists that we would write in full generality, 
we would have boundaries now. So the left boundary would be at zero and the right boundary would be at two pi. The left boundary counts and the right boundary does not. So one thing that we could do here is we can go into Desmos and we can go into these settings. Now, I mentioned this earlier um, that I was gonna show you how to type this stuff in. When you're working with Desmos, you wanna make sure that your X axis is in radians. So what I did here was I just typed in, uh, for example, my, my Desmos was already set to this, but I had it as negative three pi. So I would just type in negative three pi and that puts in the pi for you. And then the right side was at positive three pi and I was just counting by pi halves. Now, they're telling me to use from zero to two pi. So I'm gonna change this from zero and then I'm gonna go over to the other side and I'm gonna make this two pi, so two pi. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this uh, these ones, they don't have to be in radians. I'll just put it from like negative, I don't know, negative four to positive four. And I just randomly pick those numbers. If I need to adjust it, I will later. Okay. So now when we list the answers here, we're only going to look in between uh, this window right here. So the answers have to be somewhere inside of here. Now in these problems, now we're going to go ahead and start factoring. So one thing to note is how we have two different cosines. That means that we have some, uh, you know, a GCF. So if we pull out a GCF of cosine of X, that means that we're going to be left with two cosine of X minus radical three. Now, since these two things are being multiplied together and the answer is supposed to be zero, that means that we basically use the zero product property rule, which states that if two things are being multiplied, at least one of them has to be equal to zero. So what we could do here is we could just set up cosine of X equal to zero. And then we could do another problem that's two cosine of X minus radical three equals zero and solve them individually. Now, um, before I do that, I'm going to, I'm gonna solve the first one on the calculator. So we're gonna go uh, to the cosine of X. Actually, do I wanna use the calculator? I think sometimes it will be easier to even use the unit circle. So let's go over to the unit circle. So from zero to full two pi, it just means one full revolution. So um, we're doing cosine, I forgot what it said, cosine of X equals zero. So if I want the cosine to equal zero, I've got an answer right here, and then I've got an answer right here, and that's using one full revolution. So we could have um, a solution at pi halves and at three pi halves. Now, if I was to use the, um, if I was to use Desmos, I would just type in cosine of X, and we want to know where the cosine value is going to equal zero. So that means that the X value has to equal zero or actually the Y value would equal zero. So that's going to put us down here at pi halves. If this lets me click it, actually, I'll just put Y equals zero. So that's going to put us here and here, which is the same two answers that we had before. So that was the first side. The second part, let's see, we have pi halves. We also have three pi halves. And the second part, I need to solve it like we just kind of finished solving in the other part. So I have two cosine of X uh, minus three. So I'm gonna isolate it first. So that gives me radical three on this side with two cosine X. I just divide by two. So the cosine of X is equal to radical three over two. So again, you can look at the, uh, the unit circle using one full revolution we want to know where the cosine is radical three over two. So we find all the spots that have a positive radical three over two. And that's going to be these two spots. So it's going to be at pi six and 11 pi six. So pi six and 11 pi six. Now in these answers, we don't include any plus two pi n's or any plus pi n's or anything like that because it's on an interval. So that means that we have a finite number of answers or a finite number of solutions. So what I could also do is if you don't like that method, you can go over to Desmos and instead of having uh, that guy right there, we can put in the square root of three over two. And every spot where it crosses is gonna be the solutions. And you can see that the same two solutions that we came up with the other way. So from here on out, I think I'll just start using the, the, uh, the calculator and I'll just kind of not use the unit circle anymore. But when it's you doing it, it's your choice. You can do it however you want. Okay, so let's go to another question. 
Okay, next question. Cotangent cosine squared of x equals 2 cotangent. So first of all, this thing has to equal 0, so I'm going to subtract over the negative 2. I'm going to put a negative 2 cotangent to the other side. So I'll have cotangent of x cosine squared uh, of x minus 2 cotangent of x equals 0. So just like the previous problem, there's a GCF here, so I'm going to take out the cotangent of x, and that's going to leave me with cosine squared of x minus 2, and then we just separate them into our two problems using the zero product property. So cotangent of x equals 0, and then the cosine uh, squared of x minus 2 is equal to 0 also. Okay, so the first one, it's isolated already, so I'm going to go ahead and put that into the calculator. So I'm going to change this cosine to a cotangent of x. And it looks a little crazy right now, but um, we just got to know what to set it equal to. So we want to set it equal to 0, so that means the second one is going to just be y equals 0. It actually isn't as crazy as it seems, so we have an answer at pi halves and 3 pi halves. So we're going to go over here. So this answer on this side is pi halves. And three pi halves. That was the weirdest three I've ever drawn. So those are the two answers for that one. And then remember that we got to um, we got to isolate this. We can't have any exponents on it. So I'm going to add two to the other side first. So I have cosine squared of x is equal to two. And then I'm going to take the square root. Remember that when you square root, there's always a plus and minus solution. So the cosine of x is equal to that. So I'm going to go into my graph to Desmos. I'm going to change it back to a cosine over here. So cosine of x. And we're going to take a look at uh, radical 2. So radical 2, the positive. Now if you look, i change the color on this. If you look at the radical 2 here, uh, it's not going to touch the graph anywhere. And so I'll switch it to a negative and see what happens. Now it just kind of puts it down below. And so that means that there's no solutions because they're not touching so for that portion, that's going to give us no solutions. No solution. So that part has no solution, and that means the only two solutions are those two. Okay, next problem. It's a little longer, so I'm going to show you a strategy in, in case this uh, is confusing. So let's say you don't want to deal with all these tangents. What we could do is, and they do this sometimes in calculus, uh, we could say, let tangent of x equal u. So we could just use substitution here. So this problem is 3u squared minus 3u. Actually, this is a typo. This is supposed to be a 3, so I'll put a 3 in there. So that's 3u squared and then minus u plus 1 equals 0. Now, thinking about of our, all of our um, factoring strategies we got gcf we got simple abc this is not an abc because it's got four parts to it so that means that it's going to be a grouping problem so in a grouping problem we want to take out the gcf so the gcf here is going to be three u squared and that's going to leave us with u minus one and then if i take out the gcf here it's just going to be a negative one because we don't ever want that negative uh we don't ever want to forget about it so if I take everything out as a negative 1 here, that's going to make this a positive u and then a minus 1. So if I do all my factoring by grouping stuff, so that means I'm going to have a u minus 1, and then I'm going to have a 3u squared minus 1 equals 0. So at this point, this is completely factored, so now we just put the tangents back in. So this is tangent of x minus 1 equals 0, and this would be 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0. So again, we're going to use the strategy that we learned in the first part. Um, we're going to take a look at isolating the tangent. So this tangent right here, if I add 1 to the other side, uh, I can use that to type it into Desmos. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. I'm going to put in tangent of x, and I want it to equal 1. So all of the spots where this graph intersects pi fourths and five pi fourths. So that's our two answers there. So pi fourths and five pi fourths. So that one gives me two answers. Over here I have to 
get rid of that first. So I add one. So I have three tangent squared of x equals one. I have to divide by three. So I have one third of the tangent squared of x. And again, we do not want tangent squared, so we're going to have to square root this. So that gives me a plus and minus answer of one third. And I'm not going to simplify that. I'm just going to kind of leave it there because I can type it into Desmos, and Desmos will do all the simplifying for me. So I already have the tangent plugged in. I just need to uh, change the y equals equation into one third and negative one third inside the radical. So we're going to change this to radical one third. So the solutions here are at pi 6 and 7 pi 6. So pi 6 and 7 pi 6. Then I need to check the negative part. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to add a negative to this. So now the solutions are at 5 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. Oops. 5 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. So this problem altogether has a total of six answers. Okay, final one. Uh, we've got 2 sine squared of x minus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And so again, we can let sine of x just equal u. So this would be 2u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0. Now this right here, this is a complex ABC. So if I multiply these two, it gives me negative 2, and the pairs are uh, uh, 1 and 2. To make a negative 1 in the middle, though, it'd have to be negative and plus. So that means we're going to have to split this into plus u minus 2u. And then we bring down the first term and the last term. And now we can do the grouping stuff. So if I do this by grouping, uh, take out the GCF from the first term, so that's going to be a u. So it's 2u plus 1. I take out the GCF here, and it's going to be a negative 1. So that's going to leave me with 2u plus 1 again. Now remember, when you're doing um, factoring by grouping, the main idea is to have these two parentheses match, which they do. So we can take that out as a GCF. And the second set is u minus 1. And then we could just <clears throat> substitute back in the signs. So this is 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0 and then sine of x minus 1 equals 0. So we have to isolate it, so I subtract 1. So this is 2 sine x equals negative 1. Divide 2, so sine of x equals negative 1 half. And then again, isolate this one. Sine of x equals 1. So when you guys are doing this, remember, I said in the very start, you can either use the calculator uh, in Desmos or you can uh, use the unit circle. Either way is fine with me. Uh, I'm going to stick with the calculator, though. So I'm going to go sine of x, sine of x, and I forgot what the other one was. It's going to equal negative one-half. So y equals negative one-half. It looks like it has two solutions at 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. And then we want to find where sine is equal to 1. So I go back over here to Desmos. I want to set it equal to 1. It looks like it only hits at pi halves. So this one gives me an answer of pi halves. So this one has three answers. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much all you need to know for uh, section one of chapter 13.